A couple of months ago, we switched our vlogging setup and I knew I was doing something right because everybody started asking me what camera I was using suddenly when it, nobody really asked that before. So I'm gonna answer that question and our rig has ended up to be ridiculous. First, let me say, whenever we're surrounded by other vloggers, like at a press event, I notice no two people have the same rig. Everybody kind of invents their own thing and then they go with whatever works. So if you're a vlogger and you figured out what works, write a comment down below. This is what works for us. And you're gonna think it's real weird. This is the Canon EOS RP with a Canon EF adapter for their DSLR lenses and the 24 millimeter F1.4 Canon. And then on top of it, I've got this long extension arm which allows me to move the mic much closer to me. And that has really made a huge, huge difference because it's a 12 foot extension. And that means that the mic is a foot closer than, to me than it would be. Here's the difference that cheap extension bar makes. This is the sound with the mic close to me. This is the sound with the mic far away. And right at the end there, I have a little ball head that just lets me tilt the mic down a little bit and just point it right at my face. And I've just found it incrementally improves the audio quality. Why the Shure mic? Well, it sounds better than the Rode VideoMic Pro that we used to use, but more importantly, it has internal flash recording that makes it bigger, but it means we can break it off the camera at any point. And when we record internally, it records at both a high volume and a low volume. So even if we totally screw up the settings, there won't be any clipping. Now, this is a really expensive rig. The Sigma 24 millimeter F1.4 would also work with this camera and the autofocusing was actually okay. The problem with it was that the Sigma art lens was too loud. I could hear the focusing motor grinding all the time. This lens still not silent, but at least I can't pick it up on the mic and it does a better job. So more expensive, lower quality lens, but at least it's quieter. Also, when we are moving around, like if we're walking, this combination is not stabilized at all. So I switched to the Canon 24 millimeter F2.8 IS lens. It's lighter, it's stabilized, it makes the whole thing a little bit easier to hand hold. And this camera has gotten really important to us lately too. It's a 360 camera, the Insta360 ONE X. And for the longest time, we were trying to use the Fusion, but the Fusion was big and really expensive and I kept breaking the Fusion. We broke a couple copies of them and then we'd have to pay for a full replacement. This one, well, I haven't managed to break it yet, but it's also much smaller and less expensive. So if I do, then it won't cost as much. The problem with these is the front elements necessarily protrude because it needs to have a 360 degree view. And as a result, if it falls over or something, you're gonna scratch those optics. But this has been fantastic because we can walk with it and film ourselves doing things and then crop it in post and nobody's really complained. We can stick it in the middle of a room and go about our lives and record everything 360 and then crop everything down. And that's allowed us to do videos where we're not thinking about the filming. And really it's taking vlogging to the next level because it's not as intrusive. You can actually be more natural and share a truer story because you're not playing to the camera the whole time. For support, I know like these Joby tripods are the classics that every vlogger uses. And we have one too. We had to get the heaviest duty one because we have owned like every one of these Joby tripods, but the lighter weight ones, they'll tip over sometimes, especially with this heavy rig. So that's what I have today. But we've started just using our regular photo tripod, our Manfrotto Be Free tripod which allows us to not set it up on a table and is just generally stayed steadier, but we can't hand hold it. Honestly, most of the time, if I'm walking and I'm hand holding it, I'm holding the camera out just by the lens at arm's length like that and pointing it at myself. And that actually works okay. I just do that instead of sticking the Joby on there. I know all you camera geeks are freaking out. You're like, oh, the EOS R, but the 4K is terrible and it doesn't have slow motion and one card slot, right? We made a big deal about it having a card failure. Yeah, all those things suck. I'm super frustrated that those things aren't better, but like what camera am I gonna get that will give me the option for tons of background blur like this full frame 24 millimeter F1.4 does? Like Sony could do that. And in fact, I'm filming with a Sony now, but no Sony has a screen that will flip to the side. The full frame cameras don't have a flip screen at all. The only camera they have is the 6400, the A6400. 
and that doesn't have any lenses that will give me even a reasonable amount of background blur. So Sony just doesn't have a good vlogging setup right now. I cannot emphasize enough how important the flip screen on the EOS R is. I know you can connect an external monitor and that's exactly what I've done for today's vlog since obviously my vlogging camera is currently being held in my hand. But this allows me to see my settings and adjust them by just kind of touching the screen. And it also means I don't have to travel around with an external screen. That external screen has one more cable, it has an extra battery, and if either of those fail, then I just don't get to see myself and seeing yourself pretty important. I hope there's some competition soon, but right now I really think the best vlogging camera is the Canon EOS R. Now there is a new contender. It's smaller, it's less expensive, and I think it'll have the same focusing system. It's the Canon EOS RP. It's $1,300 instead of $2,300, so it could save you a grand and probably get the exact same job done. We're gonna be picking one of those up soon and testing it out, so subscribe to see that review. Why not the GH5? It's got a flip screen, it's got a mic and a headphone jack. It seems like it has everything we need. It doesn't reliably keep our face in focus. It'll just kind of hunt in and out. It also doesn't have the ability to get like that same 24 millimeter F14 background blur that we sometimes like to use. Right now, I'm filming with the 16 to 35 F2.8 and the background, as you can see, is just much sharper than it normally is. Not everybody needs the background blur. You don't always have to use it. You can use whatever f-stop, but it's just a nice option. This is kind of our big part of our job, day in and day out, and we end up spending way more money on the post-production, that kind of thing. So we will spend whatever we need to do to have a rig that works consistently, keeps us in focus, and we know can kind of deliver. What you might not expect, the thing that took the vlogging setup to the next level is the lighting. The lighting made all the difference. Now we still use natural light when we can, but you know, it's New England in the winter and the sun sets sometimes at like four o'clock or we'll have like a stormy day and natural light just isn't always possible. We found the Aperture 300D light has made all the difference. Now we're photographers, so we have big soft boxes and stuff anyway, but to be able to slap a proper Octobox on a continuous light and get that like beautiful portrait quality light in a video, it's made a big difference in our production. So you can get by with one of the lower end aperture lights for most occasions, but if you even have a reasonable amount of sunlight and you're putting on a big diffuser like this, you probably need the big expensive $1,100 light because we most of the time have it cranked up to 100%. And if you try to go outdoors in full sun, even then it's like, it's not nearly bright enough. I know this is a really expensive rig and most bloggers want a much more low end rig. We're gonna cover lower end rigs. We just have a little more testing to do to make some recommendations. So subscribe to see that. Let me know down below what vlogging gear you're using. And if you think there's something here that would make my life a little bit easier, I'd love to hear it. 